Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about KNIC lookup. What is it? Say we have a namespace A, and inside A we define a struct X and a function G. In the main function, I define x1 of X and then invoke GX1. This code will print out calling A colon colon G. There's no question about that. However, if I remove a column column and only calling g x1, what will happen? You may expect that the compiler will error out saying cannot find a function called g because the function g is only defined inside the namespace a. However, this code will not only compile, it will still print out calling a column column g. It turns out when the compiler see the function g, it will not only search the function g in the current scope and the global scope, it will also search the function in the scope where its parameter type is defined. In this case, the type of its parameter is x and x is defined in namespace a. So the compiler will search the g function in the namespace a. That is how this G function is found. This is called Koenig lookup or argument dependent lookup ADL. With Koenig lookup, we have increased the function name search scope. So if I have another function, it's a global function, also called G. This code will not compile because there are two G functions visible inside the main function. Example 2. We have a class C. Now C is a class, it's not a namespace anymore. Inside C, we have a struct Y and a static function H. In the main function, I define a y and call hy. This will print out calling c colon colon h. There's no question about that. However, if I remove c colon colon, what will happen? Since we have Koenig lookup, when the compiler see the function h, it will search the function in the scope where the type of its parameter is defined. So it will search inside C and find H, right? No. Actually, the Koenig lookup only applies to namespace. It cannot reach its tentacles into a class. So this is an error. Example 3. Now we have two namespaces. Namespace A, same as before, has a struct X and a function G. Namespace C also has a function G. In the function J, I created a X and called GX. The main function will invoke the function J. What will happen? This code will not compile. When the compiler tries to resolve the function call of G, it definitely can see this function G. However, because of the Koenig lookup, it can also see this function of G. So the compiler doesn't know which one to call. It's an ambiguous call to function G. Now, if I change C from a namespace to a class, Now what will happen? This code will compile and print out calling C colon colon G. Why? Because when the compiler tries to find function G, it will first search it inside class C. And if the function G is found, it will stop searching. Only when the G is not found inside the class C, the compiler will look at the global scope and use Koenig lookup. So if this function is not defined inside the class C, 
this code will com still compile but print out calling a colon colon g. So the conclusion we can draw from this example is the class member functions are more tightly bound with each other than with any other functions. Now let's see we have another class B and uh, this G function is being moved to B and class C is publicly derived from B. Now what will happen? This code will compile and print out calling B uh, colon colon G. So the conclusion is a member function from parent class also has a higher priority than any outside function. Name hiding. Last time we've talked about name hiding for classes and today we're going to talk about the name hiding for namespaces. We have a namespace A and inside A we have a G function which takes an integer parameter. And inside A there's a nested namespace C. C also has a G function but this G function has no parameter. And the J function invokes G8 and ultimately the J function is invoked. You may expect when the compiler says G8 it should invoke this G function because they are all under the umbrella of namespace A so this G function should be visible inside namespace C. But actually it is not. This code will not compile because this G function is shadowed by C's own G function even though they have different parameter signature. This is name hiding. Remember how to overcome name hiding? Using the using declaration. Now this code will compile. So far this example is very similar to the class example of name hiding that we've talked about last time. Now let me bring something different. Let's say A has a struct x and G is taking x as a parameter and let's remove the using declaration and define x x g x. Now according to the name hiding rule this g function will be hidden by C's own g function. So this code will not compile, right? Wrong. This code will compile and uh, print out calling a g. It is true that this g function will be hidden by C's own g function according to the name hiding rule. However, there's another rule that kicks in, which is the Koenig lookup. With Koenig lookup, the compiler will look for the G function in the, in the space where X is defined. So this code will compile even though we don't have the using declaration. This is something different from the class example. A summary of name lookup sequence. When working with namespaces, a compiler will first search a name under current scope then go to next in closed scope and then next in closed scope until finally it goes to the global scope to search the name. And when working with classes, the compiler will first search in current class scope and then parent class scope and then grandparent scope and finally go to the global scope. Name hiding will happen when a higher priority scope defines a function with the same name as a function in a lower priority scope. To override the sequence of name lookup or to bring some hidden name back to current scope, with namespaces there are two ways to do it. One is with qualifier or using declaration. Another one is using Koenig lookup. With classes there's only one way to do it which is the qualifier or using declaration. You cannot use Koenig lookup for classes.
Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel so you will be updated when I post a new video. Or you can go to my channel's homepage and click on playlists to see other videos that I'm offering. Bye bye.